Hey everyone! So finally, I am in a place of my own following my house fire. I do apologise the amount of time it's taken me to um, film the next one. I realise that I am quite behind. I think some people are now on issue 18 and we're only on issue 6. So I'm really, really sorry. For those of you who haven't seen my posts, um, I had a house fire in August and um, I'm waiting basically on a council place to become available for me um, and I've been moved to temporary accommodation places every one or two weeks since last August so my life's a bit up in the air at the moment. Um, the place that I'm in now is permanent temporary accommodation so basically I will be here until I get offered somewhere else um, and I've actually had a couple of phone calls this week of places that they're offering me um i don't know if it will work out because i am technically disabled and have certain requirements um but we shall see but when i move next time i have na now actually got all my own furniture all the other places that i was in came um furnished so that's why i've had such a long break this time is because they moved me unexpectedly with like two hours notice into a place with no furniture at all and i've had nowhere to sit up against with a chair and table I guess to crochet but I'll stop blabbering on um because we're all sorted now and when I move again I've got my own furniture so yeah there might be a bit of a break when I move but it shouldn't be as long next time so anyway today um we've got the Mickey and Minnie yellow flower which is issue six um we got some wool provided with this issue which we're going to use which is the vanilla which is this one here and then this one is left over from past issues and this one is sunflower so vanilla is your yarn a and sunflower is your yarn b as we always do we're going with the four millimeter crochet hook and yes mine looks different to others because I'm using the clover ones I'm sure you've seen from other videos that I prefer to use those ones they're much more comfortable to work with um let's get on with it I guess and we are starting with yarn a which is the vanilla so I've gone ahead and unwound some of that yarn off camera just so I've got plenty available and as we always do, we're starting with a slip knot and then putting that onto our hook. And from here, we want to do six chains. So one, yarn over the back and towards the front. I'm sure you know how to do it by now. Two, three, four, five, and six. We're then going to join with a slip stitch into our first chain. So count down your six. So I'm just going to go into this one, yarn over and pull through, and then pull through the loop that you've already got on your hook. And that is your foundation ring complete. You can see if you pull those two sides apart that you've got that hole in the middle, and that is the hole that we're going to be working through in the next round. From here, we're going to do double crochets into the ring. Um, I'm not going to tell you how many to do because as I have stated in other issues, I'm not allowed to give the full pattern of the video. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to give the full pattern in the video um, because of copyright. Now, there is a trick that it teaches us in the book, um, so I will show you how to do that as well. But to do a double crochet, and remember we're using UK terms, go in through the hole and pull up a loop, yarn over again and pull through two. And that is one complete. So the trick that it's showing us is to cover up our non-working yarn tail here. And so I'm sure most would go in through that loop and pull up this one here. And to cover that one up, we can actually involve it within the stitch. So we've this is my working yarn here, and this is my non-working yarn here. And I'm sure if you go back, you can see from the other stitch, if you hold it close to your work like so, and go in through that loop, you can pull your working yarn through, 
go over and pull through and you've included this non-working yarn within your stitch and you're covering it up and it just helps to make sure that it won't come unraveled at the end um, purely because it's becoming involved within the work and you will still be able to pull that one to tighten everything up. So we've done two. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the stitches to complete this round of round one. If you just look in your book, it will tell you how many you need to do. So that's all my double crochet stitches complete. I now need to join with a slip stitch um, to the first DC of the round. And the first one is just here. So I'm going to go into this stitch, yarn over and pull through and then pull through again for a slip stitch and that is our first round complete. If you want to you can pull that one just to tighten that loop up if you'd like. From here we're going to change colours to yarn B to our sunflower yarn so I'm just going to go and get that ready and make sure as in past videos that you make a slip knot. So I've gone ahead and cut my working yarn for my yarn A, the vanilla. Um, remember to make sure that you've got enough there to um, weave in your ends at the end. We're then doing this one slightly different to before where we've got that slip stitch in there. We then just want to pull that one all the way through because we're going to fasten this one off rather than changing the colours in through that loop. So if you pull that one tight enough, you've now got your complete ring with two tight ends essentially. We then need to join our sunflower yarn to the next round. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. We've made our slip knot. What you want to do is just to go in through any of the DC stitches. So we're looking to pick up the V's on the top. Doesn't matter which one you use. Just put your hook through. We've got our slip knot here. So put that on and then make sure you pull the two ends to tighten. And then I'm just going to pull that one through the loop like so. And then we need to do three chains. So remember, yarn over the back and towards the front, pull through one for one chain, two, three. We're now going to be learning a new stitch, which is called the double treble stitch or double treble crochet. Very easy once you know the rest of them, it's very simple just follows in line with the ones that we've already been doing and we're going to be going in through the same stitch that we've just gone into with the chains so if you can see that small gap there we're going to be going into that V again so for a double treble you want to bring your yarn over the back and towards the front once and then you want to go over again so you've got three loops on the hook from here that's when we want to go in through that stitch so if we go in through, you can see that we've got three loops on the hook of the sunflower yarn. From here, we want to yarn over again and pick up a loop. Pull that one through and you've now got four loops on the hook. From here, yarn over towards the front again and you want to pull that fifth loop through two only. And now we've got three loops on the hook. We're then going to yarn over again and bring through two again. And now we've got two loops left on the hook. You then want to yarn over again and bring through the last two. And that's your first double treble stitch complete. Well done. Once you've done your double treble, you need to chain two. One, two. From here, we're going to do um, double treble two together in every stitch around. So I'm just going to show you how to do that now. Yarn over twice as we just did. 
and then take our hook in through the next stitch and pull up a loop so exactly the same we've got four loops on the hook yarn over again and pull through two so you've got three loops yarn over again and pull through two so you've got two loops now this is where this is different and we're doing the two together we're not pulling through the last two so from here yarn over again and go back in through that stitch and pull up a loop so you've got four again and this is where we're going to finish it off we're going to pull through two pull through two pull through two and then we're going to chain another two and we're going to repeat that stitch going all the way around into every single stitch that we've got here so yarn over twice in through the next stitch and pull up a loop so you've got four yarn over pull through two and pull through two again so we just do it twice on the first one we're then going to yarn over again and go back in through the same stitch and pull up a loop so we've got four again yarn over pull through two pull through two pull through two and then chain two again I'm not going to tell you how many we need because I can't give you the full pattern but go all the way around into every single stitch that we've done here and I'll meet you back when we're done so I've gone ahead and gone all the way around and it looks something like this it is starting to curl up a bit but don't worry too much about it at this stage I just need to do my last two chains and we're then going to finish with a slip stitch into the first double treble these are our chains for the first stitch so this isn't a double treble the first double treble is this one here so we need to go into this V here at the top of this one so we're going in through here and we're going to fasten off again so if you pull that one through and pull that one through again cut your end here and then we're just going to pull that loop all the way through to tighten it off so I've just cut that one and I'm going to pull it all the way through and then tighten it off and we've got this one complete here that looks like this I believe we're now going back to yarn A which is the vanilla yarn so go ahead and make your slip knot to join our yarn A again for round three we're not going to join it into a stitch we're just going to join it into one of the chain spaces it doesn't matter which one just go in through any with your hook like so and then put your slip knot onto your hook and as always pull it tight and pull it through to the other side we're then going to chain three one two three from here we're then going to do another two treble crochet stitches into this gap not into any stitches so yarn over once go into that gap and pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and then pull through two again yarn over in through here pull up a gap sorry pull up a loop <laughs> yarn over pull through two and then pull through two again so it should look like we've got three completed stitches here but remember that first one there it's just your chain stitches I believe the aim of the game is to have three treble crochets into each gap going around but this one will look slightly different because the first one is made up of chain stitches rather than a double crochet stitch so there's no need for any chain stitches going around here we're going to go straight into the next gap so yarn over with more treble crochets Ooh one two and three and I'll show you one more yarn over and then in through the next gap 
when two and three if you go all the way around doing it in every um, chain space or gap between each petal um, I'll catch up with you when you're done so there we have gone all the way around and this one is slightly different to fasten off this one remember before we said that we rather than going into the chains of the last round we went into the top of the stitch we're going to go into the top of the stitches this time so go into the third one so count up this is sorry i realize i'm out of focus um this is our bottom so one two three we want to go into that third one which is just here if i can actually get it in there there we go yarn over pull through and pull through again and then i'm just going to cut that one off camera and pull it all the way through to fasten off like i've shown you in the other rounds so now as the book explains we're left with a circle and we need to make sure that we get this one square so we've got our granny square so the aim of the game is again this time to go in through one of the gaps and not the stitches so you can go in through any of them i'm going to put my hook in through and i've made my slip knot in our yarn be the sunflower remember to tighten that one on your hook and pull it through so we're going to start off with our four chains here one two three and four and then we're going to do a double treble back into that same space so yarn over twice sorry my cat just jumped off my bed pull up a loop so you've got four yarn over again pull through two yarn over again pull through two yarn over again so you've got three back under and pull up a loop so you've got four again pull through two pull through two pull through two so because of those initial chains there it looks like we've got three stitches going into there Then in that same space we're going to work another two trebles so yarn over go through and pull up a loop yarn over oh and pull through two and then yarn over again and pull through two and then do that again and that will start to form our corner there We then need to go into our next space just here and do three trebles into there. So yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and pull through two, and one more. So it should look like that. Different again. We're then going to do two trebles into the next space. One. Sorry, my camera's out of focus. Two. And then the next instruction is to do two double trebles into that same space so yarn over twice go in through and pull up a loop and then we're going to go through two and two yarn over again back in through pull through two pull through two and pull through two and then we're going to repeat that two and two I'm really really sorry my cats have been let in the room by my son and they're being really noisy <laughs> yarn over again two two and two and from here we need to chain two so one and two 
and it should look like this. In the next space, we're going to do the same, but the opposite way around. So we're going to do two double trebles first and then two trebles. So yarn over twice. Two and two, yarn over again, back in through and pull up a loop. Two, 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 and then we're going to do that once more. And then just to repeat the action of the last round, we're going to do another two trebles back into that same space. So we're going to yarn over and pull through, pull through two and pull through two. And the same again. There's that space complete. So right now, we're looking at something that looks slightly like this. We then need to repeat that. So we're going to do three trebles in the next space. Oh, sorry, I got hooked around the yarn then. One. Two. and three. We're then going to do, just like the next round, two trebles, then two double trebles into the next space. So there's one treble and two. One double treble. And two. I'm going to go and kick my cats out of the room because they're making so much noise. Hey, they've gone. Right, two chains. And then again, we need to do the opposite in the next gap, which is two double trebles, then two trebles. So there is my first double treble, now another. and then two trebles. One. And two. We're then repeating that again. So three trebles in the next space. One. two, three, the next one is two trebles into the next space, so one, two, and then two double trebles again, so Uh, 
there's one double treble. Sorry, I just realised I've gone out of focus again and I'm rapidly running out of yarn. And there's my second double treble. And then again, doing the opposite in the next space. So two double trebles first. There's one. There's two, and no, two more trebles. One. Two. We then need to do three trebles in the next space. One. Two. Three. In the next space, we're going to do two trebles and then two double trebles. One. Two. I'm just going to grab some more yarn. So two double trebles. There's one, and there's the other. So now we've come to the end, we just need to chain one. And then we're going to do a double crochet into the fourth chain. So these are our chains here. So just count up your four Vs. So I've got one there, two here, three, and then, sorry, that was really out of focus. I've got one, two, three, and then four. And we're going to do a double crochet into that one. So pull a loop through and pull through again. So at the end of that round, we've now got something that's slightly more square and we're sticking with the same color yarn. So from here, you need to chain three. One, two, three. This is now counted as our corner space. So we want to do two trebles into that space. One, and two and it will look like that it then says that we need to skip the four chain the four chain are these four chains that you've done here so ignore those and then we're going to go into the v's again at the top here 
and we're going to do a treble into the next two trebles. So we're going to go into this V here and do a treble and then we're going to do it for the next one as well. So there's two done. From here, we're going to go back into the spaces and make three trebles. One. Two. Three. And then we're going to repeat that in the next space. One, two, three. If you look at the top here, for this round here, you can see that there's three V's at the top. So we need to skip the first one and do another two trebles, but only into the top of these two V's. So we're going into this one. One. And then the next one. Two. And just to show you what we've done, we've got a fairly straight edge there now. So we've now come to our next corner, which is this gap here. From here, we want to do three trebles into the space. One. Two. And three. From there, we are going to chain two and then do another three trebles. So chain one, chain two, and then one treble, two trebles, and three trebles. We're then going to repeat what we've just done, going all the way around. So the next step was to skip the first one. So your first V here, and then do trebles into these two. One. and two, and then three trebles into each of the next two spaces. One, two, Three, one, two, three. And then again, skip that first one and do two trebles into each of the next stitches afterwards. So in through this V here, one and two and then we're back at the next corner space so from here it's three trebles two chains three trebles one two three, 
two chains, and then another three trebles, one, two, three. As we did before, skip that first V and trebles into these two. One, two, three trebles into your next two gaps. One, two, three. Next one, one, two, three. Remember to skip that first one, and then we're going into here, one, And two, so this is your next corner, three trebles, two chains, three trebles, one, two, three, two chains, one, two, three, and we're on our last row now. So as before, skip your first one, and then two trebles. Three chains into this gap, three chains into the next gap. Apologies. Three trebles into this gap, and then three trebles into the next gap. One, two, three, one, two, and three. Skip that next V. Treble into that stitch and a treble into the next one. So we're back to our last corner now. So we need to do three trebles into this space. One. Two. And three. Chain one from here. And then our last instruction is to do one double crochet into the third chain. So we need to try and find out where our chains are here. So I've got one here, then two, and then there's the third one. So we're going in through this gap here, this one just here. So going through. And there you have finished round five. And now you're looking at something like this. 
So now we're moving on to round six and luckily this looks like a much easier round fingers crossed because I think the last one, um, I don't know what it will be like from watching the video but from trying to understand it from the pattern and even the pictures in the book, it was really confusing. So this one's one that repeats again but we're just working into the stitches so it's much easier. Just bear with me, I need to adjust my camera because there's no room for my arms. There we go. So, we're starting off with chains again, as we normally do. And this time, it's three. One, two, three. We then need to work one treble into the corner space. So we're going back into this gap here. We then need to work a treble in every stitch going around. Um, it tells you in the book exactly how many there should be, so you can double check that you've done it correctly. Um, I'm not going to tell you over the camera due to the copyright reasons, but hopefully we've all got it correct. So I just had a count of mine off camera just to make sure that I've done it right. And I was really worried that I wouldn't have done, but actually I have. Again, I didn't do that on camera because I don't want to give too much away. So literally all we're going to do is to treble in each stitch right up to that corner. So I'll do a couple and then I'll get on with doing them off camera just to speed up this video a bit because I'm quite aware of how long this one's going off for. So literally just in every stitch. Oh, that one's wrong I didn't yarn over sorry so we're just doing that all the way along in every stitch I will actually go all the way along because I need to show you how to do a corner but I'm just gonna do it as quickly as I can Sorry for the silence. That you might welcome it. You might find my voice really annoying. I'm sorry if you do. I messed up there, I'm going to redo that one. Oh, why is that one being odd? There we go. See, even people that have been crocheting for years and years and years make mistakes. Trust me. So just going into my last one. Oh, come on. That one's a bit tight because it's right on the corner. Okay, so now I'm at the corner space. And you can tell the corner space by, you can pretty much see that it's a square now and you've got your gap in the corner. Um, so into the corner we are doing, I'm just checking the book, two trebles, two chains, two trebles. So... The same stitch as what we've done all the way around. One treble, two treble, two chains, one treble, and two treble. And just by completing those two chains in the corner there, that's carrying on with making the edge of the corner so it's exactly the same all the way around same number of stitches as it says in the book and then 
two trebles, two chains, two trebles in every corner. I'm going to go all the way around and when I get back to the start up here, I will come back and show you what you need to do to finish the round off. See you shortly. So I've gone all the way around and it should look something like this. We come to our last corner space. So I'm going to go into there and do two trebles and two chains. Doesn't actually tell you this in the book, but it does make sense to do it this way. And I'll show you why. Because even though we only did one treble in that gap um, for our first stitch, those are our chains and that is counted as our other treble. So we've got our two trebles in the corner there and our two trebles in the corner there. And we've just done our two chains. So once we join that together, that'll make our next corner. I hope that makes sense. And then we need to slip stitch into the third um, chain. So one, two, three. So did you get that? One, two, three. It'll be this one here. So I'm going in through here. And we're gonna fasten off and use the other color again now which is the vanilla. So I've just slip stitched. I'm just going to cut that yarn. Remember to cut it long enough so you've got a tail to weave in. And then pull that one through. And we've just completed using the sunflower wrap yarn for this round. So it looks like this now. Oh, we've just got one more round to go, which is round seven. I don't know how many of you have read on through the book, um, but just reading through the instructions, they're wrong again, and I mean by looking at the pictures. So if you look at picture number 12 from round 7, it says make one treble in each half treble of the previous round. Well, we didn't do half trebles in the previous round, we did trebles. That should actually read, make one half treble in each treble of the previous round, because this round is half trebles. If you go by the written instructions and look at round seven, it does say one HTR. So we're definitely doing half trebles in this round. So if you've tried to do this square without my video and now you're just coming here for clarification hopefully that clears that up um if you haven't attempted the square yet none of that made sense just breeze over it just ignore it just fast forward it and let's just move on lol okay i am going to go into any corner space and i've made my slip knot already so I'm going to put my hook through, put my yarn on, tighten it as always, make sure I've got the working yarn, pull that one through, and then we are doing two chains. We're then going to do one half treble into that corner space. So half treble, I don't know if you remember, is yarning over towards the front, going in that space and pulling a loop through, yarning over again, and we're pulling through all three immediately. Just like that. We're then going to half treble in every stitch along here. This is basically exactly the same as the last round, but we're doing half trebles rather than trebles. Again, I'm not going to tell you how many there should be because I'd be revealing the pattern, but we want to do half trebles going all the way along. Um, I'll just do a couple just to show you, but I'm not gonna show you how to do the corners this time because it's just a repeat of the last round. So one, two, three, I'll do five, four, five. So you want something that looks like this. It's a slightly shorter stitch than the treble below, which is why it's a half treble, because it's smaller. Um, when you get to the corner, it's the same as the previous pattern. Do you remember we did um, two trebles, two chains, two trebles? Well, 
in this round it's two half trebles two chains two half trebles so i know you know what you're doing by now again i'm going to go all the way around and i will meet you at the end just to show you how to finish off the last corner and also what the finished square should look like so see you shortly so i'm back having gone all the way around finish just like before we're going to do two half trebles into this corner let's see if i can get my hook in there one and two two chains to finish off the corner space one two and then we are going going then we are going to join with a slip stitch into the second chain so just opening that up we've got one chain here and the second one is just here so we're going to go into that space here or we will if it cooperates just slip stitch that one I'm going to cut my yarn and make sure it's got a long enough tail to weave in the ends and then pull that one through as we have on the others and tighten it off and there we go square complete Oh god, I'm not liking the look of all those ends that we've got to weave in. I'm just going to push that one through to the back so then we can get more of a complete picture of how the square looks without the ends in the way. So here we go, what do you think? I know they've called it a flower, but is that not a sun? Sorry, Disney crochet, but I'm doubting you here. That is most definitely a sun. Okay, so as I always do, I'm going to do a size comparison. I've got my old um, other squares that I've made in a drawer in front of me. So I'm just going to grab one out. And let's have a look, shall we? Oh, maybe just a tad bigger, the yellow one is, do we think? I think that's all right though it's not that much different and once we've blocked them they'll all stretch to the same size anyway quite happy with that let's put the yellow on top and see if that makes a difference yeah you can see look how it's slightly bigger but that's okay they stretch it's fine I've obviously just done loose tension in the yellow one but it's not a problem okay so there's that one done sorry I'm just putting my other square away so it's out my way and um, that's number six done hopefully I can get number seven done quite quickly behind this one remember to subscribe because then you get notifications as soon as the videos are posted the new ones otherwise you've got to wait for me to remember to post in the Facebook groups I've got a really slow memory I apologize um all I want to know for this square, now that we've done six, is make a comment below of which one is your favourite to look at so far. I'm going to do um, a different survey at the end of every one now, just to get an idea of what everyone thinks. I'm just going by looks, what is your favourite? I think my favourite so far has to be number five the tangled rose bouquet i think it's just really really pretty um but i will put that in the comments and i look forward to hearing which one you think is the best to look at so far as well so good luck with square number six i shall leave you to it and see you for the next one bye <laughs>